On Wednesday morning, a fund manager decides to buy 20,000 shares when the price is $50. The order was set with a limit price of $50.50. When the order entered the market for execution, the price is $50.30. Commission is $0.02 cents per share. So the trade details are as follows. So 10,000 shares were purchased at $50.38 and 6,000 shares were purchased at $50.45. At the end of the day, the remaining order is cancelled and the closing price is $50.55. So now we're going to calculate the implementation shortfall in dollar terms and in basis points. And after that, we are going to look at the breakdown of the implementation shortfall okay, and its uh, components. So here, $50 is the decision price. okay, And uh, $50.30, uh, this is the arrival price. okay, And of course, here... The prices here are the execution prices, okay, or the transaction prices. So to get the implementation shortfall, we will need the paper return minus the actual return. So to start off, uh, for paper return, okay, we would assume that all the shares were purchased, okay, so that would be twenty thousand shares, and then we will multiply by the ending price okay of the day which is uh, fifty dollars and fifty five cents will then minus the decision price which is fifty dollars so that will be a fifty five cents gain each times twenty thousand so that comes out to eleven thousand dollars now for the actual return we will then take the ending value of all the shares purchased here which is sixteen thousand okay so for that sixteen thousand shares purchased the price or the value at the end of the day then we'll multiply by fifty dollars and fifty five cents so this is the value of that sixteen thousand shares by the end of the day and then we'll compare it to the purchase uh, cost okay which is uh, ten thousand shares multiply by fifty dollars and thirty eight cents and then we minus uh, six thousand shares multiply by fifty dollars and forty five cents and then we minus the commission for the sixteen thousand shares purchase Okay, so that will be two cents each. So by calculating this, we will get one thousand nine hundred and eighty dollars. So you can see that the actual return is much lower than the paper return. So the difference between these two is what we call the implementation shortfall. Okay, which is uh, eleven thousand. Then we minus one thousand nine hundred and eighty. Okay, so that gives us nine thousand and twenty dollars. Now, if you want to express the implementation shortfall in basis points, then we would need the paper portfolio value. So the paper portfolio value is equals to the number of shares okay, that they want to buy, which is 20,000. And then we multiply by the decision price, which is 50. So that would be $1 million. We would then take the implementation shortfall that we have calculated. okay, And then uh, we will divide this by... I will take 9,020 divided by 1 million. Okay, and if you want to convert this to basis points, we'll multiply that by 10,000. All right, and we will get 90.2 basis points. So the implementation shortfall is positive in this case, which means that the manager and the trader have underperformed in certain areas, which could be due to the delay or the trading, or it could be the opportunity cost, or it could be the fees as well. Okay, so it could be a combination of one or two or three of all the components. So we will want to know where the majority of this cost came from. Now, before we go to the next part, just another way to calculate this actual return. If you do not want to take the ending value minus the beginning value, okay, or the purchase cost, what you could have done is uh, we could have taken the gain or loss for each of these share purchase. For example, for these 10,000 shares, okay, for these 10,000 shares, Okay, you bought it at 50.38, but the ending price is 50.55. So we'll take 50.55 minus uh, 50.38. Okay, so there's a gain of 17 cents there for the 10,000 shares. And then uh, for the 6,000 shares that was purchased, okay, uh, that you compare 50.55, okay, against uh, 50.45. Okay, so that'll be the gain on these uh, 16,000 shares here. And then we'll minus the commission okay you minus uh, 16,000 times two cents all right so you will also get uh, 1980 in this case now moving on to the next part now we'll calculate the execution cost the opportunity cost and the fees 
All right. So in this case, uh, when you are measuring execution cost, we will take it from the point of the, the, the decision making. So let me draw a timeline here. So you will measure it from the point of uh, decision. This was when the decision was made. Okay. At the price of uh, 50. Okay. And then up to the point of the arrival of the order. Okay. So when the order entered the market for execution, the price was $50 and 30 cents. And then in terms of uh, transaction, okay, there were two prices there. So one of them, uh, there'll be transaction one and of course transaction two. Okay. Transaction one happened at 50.38. Transaction two happened at 50.45. Okay. And finally, the order was cancelled at the end of the day and the closing price is $50. Okay. And 55 cents. So if you are measuring the execution cost, so execution cost will be measured from the point of the decision, okay, up to the execution, okay, up to the execution of the trades. So in this case, uh, we have two transactions, so we will have, okay, to measure these two execution costs, okay, and then we'll total it up, okay, so this portion here would be for execution, okay, and uh, for opportunity cost, this will be measured for the shares that were not purchased, Okay, and you measure it from the point where the decision was made up to the closing price. Okay, when the order was cancelled. Okay, so this is for opportunity costs. Okay, but for the shares not purchased. In this case, 16,000 shares were purchased. So that means uh, it is for the 4,000 shares that were not purchased. Okay, whereas uh, this, 16, this execution cost is for the 16,000 shares that were purchased on the day. Okay, and of course, the fees would be the 2 cents per share for that 16,000 shares. Right, so to kickstart, uh, for execution costs, uh, we will calculate in two portions. So, uh, for the execution costs, alright, we would have the 10,000 shares, okay, which was purchased at $50.38. So, we compare $50.38 against the decision price, which is uh, $50 here. And then for the 6,000 shares, it was purchased at $50.45. We compare it against the decision price. All right, and then we divide this by the paper portfolio value, okay, which in this case is uh, 1 million as we computed earlier. Okay, and uh, if you calculate this, the execution cost is 6,500. All right, and uh, we divide by 1 million. And of course, uh, if you want to convert to basis points, we multiply by uh, 10,000. All right, and we will get 65 basis points here. Right, and then for opportunity cost, we will take this for the shares not purchased, which is uh, 4,000 shares there, and we'll measure this from the decision price up to the closing price for the day, 50.55 minus $50, and then we divide by 1 million. Okay, so the opportunity cost here would be 2,200, okay, and then uh, we divide by 1 million. Okay, and uh, you will multiply by 10,000 basis points. So this will be 22 basis points here. And then for the fees, for the fees, okay, uh, this would be 16,000 shares multiplied by 2 cents per share. Okay, uh, and then we divide by 1 million. Okay, and then, uh, so 16,000 times uh, 2 cents, okay, so this would be $320. Okay, so this is $320, right? So the fees here comes out to 3.2 basis points. So if we were to sum up everything, 65 plus 22 plus 3.2, okay, 65 plus 22 plus 3.2, okay, we'll actually get 90.2 basis points, okay, which is the same as the implementation shortfall that we computed earlier, okay, 90.2 basis points. Right, so that would be, the, so we can reconcile uh, these three components to the implementation shortfall. Now, to the last part, let's calculate the delay cost and the trading cost. Now, for the execution cost earlier, we can break it up into delay cost and trading cost. So, for delay cost, we will measure it from the decision price up to the arrival price, okay? So, we'll draw a cutoff point here. So, this is from the decision, okay, up to arrival. Okay, decision up to arrival. So this is this will be the what we call the delay cost, right? So when you calculate the delay cost, okay. So for that sixteen thousand shares, 
Okay, you multiply against the, uh, uh, the arrival price, which is uh, $50.30, and then we minus the decision price. All right, so this comes out to 4800 Okay, so then we divide by the paper portfolio value, $1 million there. Okay, so that comes up to uh, 4008 divide by 1 million, and then you can convert this to basis points. So there will be 48 basis points. And then for the trading cost, trading cost will be measured from the arrival price up to the, uh, the transaction price for the order. So we measure this up to these points here. So the trading cost is equals to 10,000. Okay, and we multiply by 50.38, the transaction price minus the arrival price, 50.3. And then for the 6,000 shares, we multiply against the transaction price, 50.45 minus the arrival price. Okay, so uh, this would come up to 1,700. Okay, if you calculate uh, this uh, for these two transactions. Okay, then uh, we will divide by the paper portfolio value. Okay, and then you divide by people portfolio value and then you convert to basis points. Okay, so you will get 17 basis points in this case. And if you take 48 plus 17 basis points, that will give you 65 basis points. Okay, and this is what we call the execution cost. Okay, so this reconciles back to our earlier working. Okay, where we computed the execution cost of 65 basis points. So, uh, out of all these costs, Okay, what contributed the most to the implementation shortfall? So out of uh, 90.2 basis points, the most of it came from the execution cost, uh, which is 65 basis points. And if you drill down to the uh, subcomponent, you can see that the delay cost actually contributed the most, okay, which is 48, point, uh, 48 basis points out of 65 basis points. Okay, or even if you compare it to the overall, okay, 48 out of 90.2, okay, is a significant portion. So the delay here contributed the most to the implementation shortfall. So it could be a possible uh, delay here due to the choice of broker. They couldn't decide which broker to use or which algorithm to use to execute. Okay, so perhaps um, they could have planned much earlier on which broker they, they will use for the trade or which algorithm they would use so that they can shorten the time okay, uh, between the decision and uh, uh, the arrival of the order to the market.